This is an MRI of the lower back. Um, we're looking in from a side view. So to get you oriented, this would be the front of the abdomen. This would be the outside of the back. This here would be the tailbone. The bones are numbered, so this would be the fifth lumbar vertebra, the fourth lumbar vertebra, the third, second, and first lumbar vertebra. In between the bones are these dark oval spaces, which are the disc. In addition, you can see this white stuff here, that spinal fluid in the spinal canal, and the little stripes that you see are the nerve rootlets that run within the spinal canal. So again, we're looking in from the side, this would be the front, this would be the back, and this is the tailbone. Now you can see between the fourth and fifth bone, there's a herniated disc, which is represented by this dark structure here. And the herniated disc has herniated backwards into the spinal canal and is pinching the nerve. So this is a good example of a herniated disc between the fourth and fifth bone of the lumbar spine. This is another view of the spine I'd like to show you. This is a, a, a view looking straight down the center of the spinal canal. So to get you oriented, this would be the front, this would be the outside of the back, the right side of the picture is the left side of the body, and the left side of the picture is the right side of the body. Again, we're looking straight down the center of the spinal canal. Uh, this oval white structure is the spinal canal itself filled with spinal fluid. And then there's an area where the nerve goes out. So you can see this gray structure here is a nerve, and this gray structure here is a nerve. The nerve goes out through a space between the edge of the disc, which is this point right here, this dark line represents the edge of the disc. And this dark border right here is the edge of your joint. So between the edge of the disc and the edge of the joint, there's an opening or space where the nerve goes out. And at this level, you can see how nice and big and open these spaces are for the nerves to go out. So this would be a normal looking level of the lumbar spine now these are the slices of the lower back looking at the level where the herniated disc is. So if you look here on this particular slice, you can see there's a broad disc herniation represented by this dark material um, that's pushing into the spinal canal and also narrowing the space and pinching the nerves as they go out through their openings. And you can see the disc is more off to this side of the picture, which is the uh, left side of your body. If you come to the other slice just below that one, you can see the uh, herniated disc right here and that's a piece of disc material that has come out of the disc space and gone downward and tucked itself down under the nerve pinching the nerve on this side which again is the left. So most people who come in with a herniated disc with a pinched nerve typically they'll present with symptoms with uh, back pain maybe pain or numbness into the butt hip or down the leg um, and then what I do what happens at surgery is uh, we perform a laminectomy. So again, this is the lamina bone right here. I would take a portion of this bone off the back of the spine, which gives me access to where the disc is. And then what I can do is I gently move the nerve so I can see the disc and then I trim that portion of the disc off that's pinching the nerve. So I would actually take that piece of disc right out and that would unpinch your nerve and help with the symptoms uh, that you're having. It's not unsimilar to having a stone or pebble under your foot uh, uh, in your shoe. So if you're walking around with a stone or a pebble under your foot uh, in your shoe, it hurts. If you get in there and take that pebble or stone out, your foot feels better. It's very similar. Um, by getting in there and taking that portion of the disc out and trimming it off, that will unpinch the nerve and help with your symptoms. So if we come back to the next image uh, from the side view, what I would actually do at surgery is I would trim this portion of the disc off and by doing that, that would unpinch the nerve um, and help with your symptoms. So this may be representative of an MRI that you saw in the office, which represents a herniated disc. This is a model of the spine looking in from the back side. So we're looking at a model of the lower back. When you look at it, you can see these protrusions which are the bone over the back of your spine. These structures I'm pointing at are called spinous process. When you feel your back and you push on the middle of your back and you feel those firm bumps, those are the spinous processes, which are these bones I'm pointing out right here. Attached to the spinous process is called lamina. So when you hear of people having a laminectomy, it's this bone that's being resected right here. 
And then next to the lamina are the joints of the spine called the facet joints. So this is the spinous process. These are the lamina. And then this is the joint called the facet joint. So when you have a laminectomy for a herniated disc or a pinched nerve, what I'm doing is I'm resecting a portion of the lamina bone and that is called a laminectomy. By resecting this bone, that's helping to unpinch the nerve, but also giving me access to the disc if I need to resect a herniated disc. So for your surgery, I'm performing a laminectomy by taking a portion of the lamina bone out. That helps to unpinch the nerve and also gives me access to where the disc is in case I need to trim some of the disc off.